Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video I wanted to talk to you about the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and what effects this has to Palantir and Tesla and my little understanding of why this has happened. It's a pretty interesting story uh, because the way I understand what has happened is that uh, they this is a bank that specializes in uh, startup capital uh, and you know being the bank for startups so that means that they have very few customers with very large deposits right and as the uh, the boom in startups has been happening they have been getting more and more uh, money and they had to do something with the customers money and their idea was to basically buy bonds with that money which is very very secure however because the interest rate at the time when they were buying the bonds was near zero so they opted to have you know five to ten year bonds which is you know very long term uh, with a big part of their liquidity right and this is no problem as long as you can wait for the bonds to mature but what happens as the fed is increasing the interest rates so if they ever were to come into a situation that they have to sell the bonds uh, that are paying one percent interest then who would buy them if they can just buy the T-bills for, you know, close to 5%. So in o the only way that they can sell these bonds is that they have to sell them at a loss and uh, then they would lose a lot of money. So you have this funny situation that per the bookkeeping and the balance sheet, everything looks good because, you know, the customers deposited a hundred billion dollars and they have a hundred billion dollars worth of bonds. Uh, the only problem is that this is not liquid and most probably what happened is they had uh, these are just made up numbers now to make the explanation simple uh, and after this I'm going to go into what this has to do with Palantir and Tesla my two favorite stocks for this year so most probably what happened is they decided to put let's say 100 billion dollars into 10 year bonds and then 50 billion dollars to have uh, in more liquid assets but the problem is that because their customers are only uh, startups, um, so th and those startups are burning money, and they were not getting new funding. So that means that the cash balance at the bank was just going down, going down, going down. And then they reached this limit where they like, okay, we need extra liquidity, and we are supposed to have extra liquidity, but we lost money on the bonds. So if we sell the bonds, then on paper, we don't have enough money to pay everyone back. And then now they came into the second freakishly unlucky incident that they basically sold the bonds at a loss and they announced this. And then because their customers are only startups who have, you know, certain backers and founders and board members who are probably all connected, they understood that. Uh, they don't have money to pay back everyone. So what does every founder say? Panic first and then the last one to panic will, you know, uh, basically take take the fall with the bank, right? So all the startups started pulling out the money at the same time and within the news breaking, I think it was like one and a half days and the news is just out that the FDIC took over the bank and the bank has failed and the bank is bankrupt. and. Uh, then there is the questions of is this going to be a contagion into uh, many other banks and uh, this is a very valid question because again on paper and on balance sheets uh, this bank looked very good right but when you went into you know below the surface and looked at what is the assets that are listed what is the actual value of the assets that's when you know the shit really hit the fan and are there any other banks that have the same? And uh, if there are, is this like a Lehman brother type of event that is going to, you know, uh, push the financial sector into, you know, like a mass domino effect and everybody is going to fail. So I'm not going to hold you up here. My opinion is uh, that this is not going to happen. However, there is a few other banks that there might be a little contagion uh, with this because there is a few other banks that have possibly similar um, balance sheets like the SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. And I heard that Robinhood also has this, that they offer interest to the customers to keep money at Robinhood. And then they put this money with 
uh, you know, four smaller regional banks who also pay Robinhood a very high interest. And those banks have the bond have bonds the same way that SVB had the bonds. So theoretically, what happens if those other banks fail and then suddenly Robinhood doesn't have the money and then yeah. So there can be contagion, but I don't think that it's going to be a big uh, contagion. And I wanted to, obviously I'm looking at this situation and I'm always thinking, how does this affect my two favorite stocks and my only two stocks currently in my portfolio, Palantir and Tesla. And to be honest, Palantir and Tesla are both very safe. They have basically no debt uh, on their balance sheet. Uh, there is nothing that is going to happen to the companies. The companies are going to start delivering and it's going to be amazing. However, because this is a mass panic, it can be that the stock price gets affected. And as we see, uh, Tesla went up today, which is pretty crazy when the market is down huge. Uh, Palantir went down 4%. And to be honest, the price of Palantir is starting to look pretty attractive again. Uh, there's only very short times in Palantir's life when it has been below $7. And if you follow me and if you're a Patreon member, then you have access to my uh, Palantir valuation. By the way, if you are interested, you can check it out in the first link in the description box below. It's five bucks a month. You get access to exclusive content. You get direct access to me and lots of other goodies. Uh, so why not check it out? But then you would know that below $8 Palantir is very, very sexy to me. And I'm kind of happy that Palantir is back down at this price. I was very worried that I missed the bottom uh, and I couldn't buy more of Tesla and Palantir. Uh, Tesla is basically after investor day, it's not reacting to, to this news, but after investor day has pulled back uh, a lot, which is very, very nice. I'm hoping that it will pull back more. Um, so to recap this, I, I think there will be minor contagion. And if there is a panic, it's going to affect the stock price. But the companies of Palantir and Tesla are going to be doing very well. Now, I just want to show you a few tweets about this situation that I think are insightful and interesting and uh, might be cool to know. So first one is meet Kevin. Last month, I moved 90% of my startups working capital out of a small bank and into a tier one bank. I'm not, I'm now instructing the rest to be moved ASAP, not worth the risk. Get out of small banks. We prefer J, JP Morgan. So the point is that probably there is so many people thinking the same way that he is thinking. And this is the ripple effect that can cause other small banks to fail. And unfortunately, it's not worth to take risk on a bank because you know you go into risk reward ratios and what is the risk uh, what do you win if you trust a bank you your money is just the money like if you deposit a hundred dollars it's still a hundred dollars at the end of the day which is zero gain to you right but what do you lose if the bank goes under you lose everything unless the amount is below 250,000 because then you're FDIC insured but you know when you talk about big companies and startups then obviously we're talking about millions and it's not worth the risk so if you're prudent you would move money out of the regional banks this is what I would do if I was in the US but this is also what's probably going to cause the demise of a few more banks unless something happens um, Jason Calacanis really like this guy. Lots of startups are missing payroll in two to four weeks. If a Silicon Valley bank doesn't have the deposits, B, uh, SVB doesn't get sold. We know that this didn't happen. And if SVB isn't rescued, this is DEFCON one. Um, yeah, this is sort of what happened. So there might be a lot of uh, startups that didn't manage to pull their money out. This, this is really the question, like who managed to pull the money out and who didn't? And the, the Silicon Valley, I, I can't wait to see the all in the podcast. I think it should be coming out tomorrow and see what these guys uh, think about this. There potentially might be a lot of startups that start failing even though they have money on the on the balance sheet, but they can't get the money out and it's not liquid and they can't make payroll. So that really sucks. 
Then the next one, David Sachs, also on the All In podcast. Where is Powell? Where is Yellen? Stop this crisis now. Announce that all the depositors will be safe place as we be in a, with a top four bank. Do this before Monday open and there will be no contagion and the crisis, uh, do this or there will be contagion and the crisis will spread. Anybody who thinks that preventing bank runs and panics isn't a federal responsibility missed a couple of hundred years of financial history. It's called systemic risk and only federal banking authorities can stop it. Um, if the Fed doesn't nip the bank run in the bud, regional banks will be decimated and all that will be left is the bigger banks. You know the too big to fail ones. This will not help the little guys. So I 100% agree with this. And obviously it remains to be seen what is the contagion. And unfortunately, I think there will be a contagion. And again, why take the risk uh, from the federal uh, authorities? I think that if you have a systemic risk and a systemic failure, it will potentially cost 100 times more or you know, way, way more than just nipping this thing in the, in the bud. Uh, so I, I agree with him. It's a very interesting uh, viewpoint. And the next one is another regional banks whose stock is 50% down today. And this might be the next one to follow. We have to see. I actually don't know what their balance sheet looks like, but they might be the first victim of the contamination. And we just have to wait and see what happens. So very interesting guys it's crazy how i first heard about the news yesterday and today this bank is uh bankrupt and again it's not going to affect palantir and tesla uh, the companies it might affect palantir and tesla the stock price but this is just good for us long-term investors so please make sure you use this opportunity wisely thank you so much for watching please make sure you're subscribed and i will see you in the next video ciao ciao